for me, this all started with one seemingly simple question. I grew up in a late 80s, early 90s pre-internet Australia, which is a large, isolated country with only a handful of cities around the coast, with a landmass comparable to that of, say, the United States of America, but with only around 8% of the population of the US. It's kind of a unique place to live. So if you're into arcades and pinball during that time here in Australia, you're halfway around the globe from where these big, bulky, iconic games are created. My local arcade was in the back streets of a place called Christie's Beach, a small coastal town about an hour south of one of the smallest Australian cities, Adelaide. And this arcade was actually a bowling alley, but that bowling alley had a Mortal Kombat 2. And that was all that mattered to me because, well, that's my game. The one game that secured my lifelong love of video games. We all have one. I recently went back to that bowling alley after more than 25 years, and hearing those bowling alley sounds and smelling that bowling alley smell, but not seeing that Mortal Kombat 2 there, it gave me this strange sting of nostalgic heartbreak. And so I needed to know that one seemingly simple question. Where did that Mortal Kombat 2 go? Where did all of the arcade and pinball machines from that era go? So I set out to find an answer to that one seemingly simple question. But on my way to finding that out, I found myself going in the other direction, all the way back to the start, and wondering, where did they come from in the first place? Around about 400 kilometers away from the bowling alley in Christie's Beach, in one of the first motels built in Australia back in the 50s, on the side of the highway that connects Adelaide to Melbourne, I found this place. The Australian Pinball Museum, a truly unique place that connects the past with the present and is home to a handful of games that kind of started it all. Welcome to the Pimble Oasis. It's a bit like a maze of room after room going in all directions. You never know what you'll find around each corner. These along here are from the 1930s and that's the very start of the commercial pinball machines. Baffle Ball here was the first mass produced commercial pinball machine. A lot of 1930s machines didn't survive the World War II because it was all the metal work that they salvaged and melted down to use for munitions. Some of the mechanical technology in the games from the 30s are just, you know, in incredible. They really pushed the boundaries of what they could actually do with the technology at the time and a lot of big innovations happened in the 30s. Pimble has always had the plunger that you pull back to the skill shop. In these early pre-flipper games, that was the main point of the game knowing how far to pull it back to make it land where you want it to. Then, so on these ones, the, the ball goes in, the flap closes it so you can't go in that hole again, and the score is flips over at the bottom there. You can sort of see with this how the idea of tilting and nudging came into play. This ball in here, that's part of the tilt mechanism. It will sit up inside there when the game's running and if you nudge it and tilt it the ball falls down and that will activate the tilt. This is all the runners where the ball goes down a hole and then runs down to the scoring area and also there's some movement back and forth that's part of the reset cycle. For many, many years, we had a few pinball machines, a few video games for the motel guests. Just testing the waters to see, is pinball and arcade having a resurgence? Is this actually gonna happen? This was around, say, 2012. The ACDC pinball was released, and that's what got people talking about pinball again in Australia. It actually started to become popular, and we thought, okay, well, let's go big. Let's open something for the public. Yeah, we'll go for the a museum. It's not just a, come in here and play the games, but we're looking at history and what, how pinballs are done, education.